live, folks. So, so happy to have you guys here. My name is Angela Petrilli, here with a brand new live episode of the Riff Rundown with the awesome folks at Fishman. So, so happy you guys are here. I'll give you all moments to, to trickle in and tune in. Again, really excited, as always, to be teaching you guys some of my favorite tunes live in an hour. It is so much fun. Today, what we're going to be doing is If I Needed Someone by The Beatles on the Rubber Soul album. So we'll be learning that today. Have your electric guitar in standard tuning with a capo on the seventh fret. So capo on the seventh fret electric guitar. If you don't have an electric guitar, totally okay. You can do this on an acoustic too, but I want to stay as true to the album as possible here. So we're going to be doing this on an electric. If you have a 12 string, even better, even better. But I know most of us have a strict six string electric guitar. So that's what we're going to be doing here today. So I'm seeing folks are tuning in. Thank you so much. we got New England in the house in New York and Myrtle Beach. Thank you all for being here. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to play the tune. We're going to talk about what we're going to go over today. We are going over George's part first, and then we're going to go over John's part after. So George's part is going to take a little bit longer, but the second half of the lesson will be pertaining to what John is doing on this song. This is a really, really fun one. I'm really, really excited about it. So again, standard tuning, capo on the seventh fret. It's going to be a lot of fun. So folks, let me know where you are tuning in from and your favorite favorite Beatles album. All right, so here we go. Happy Stratter Day, everybody. Here is If I Needed Someone. something like that. That's what we'll be going over today. It's a really, really fun one. Yes, Sam, George did love the guitar the capo on the seventh fret. So we're going to be doing that today. So whatever kind of capo you have, go ahead and put it on there. Seventh fret. Uh, this is a really, really fun one. So as I mentioned at the top, this, al this song was on the album Rubber Soul. I'll give you guys a little bit of some fun facts. I always like to do that. Some fun facts um, about the tune. So written by George Harrison. All right, so this was on the Rubber Soul album released in 1965. This was the first album of the Beatles that didn't have their name on the front cover, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and this is a, an album that inspired the Beach Boys to create pet sounds, which I think is a really, really cool thing. And then we all know that pet sounds, the Beatles heard that and then Sgt. Pepper was inspired by that album. So it's really, really beautiful how music can inspire uh, more great music. I think it's really great. I think it's really great. And for me personally, Rubber Soul is my favorite Beatles album. So, and I see that it's a couple of, uh, of your guys's too. So I think that's really great. So let's go ahead and get started here. So capo with the seventh fret standard tune guitar here. If you happen to have a 12 string, I know they, um, that George used a 12 string Rickenbacker electric guitar on this. That would sound really, really cool uh, too if, if you got one of those. So, but for this, we're going to go ahead and do it on a six string. It's going to sound similar. All right. So when we're going ahead and looking at the intro, so I'm going to go ahead and play just the intro here. 
it's gonna look and sound like this. So what this riff is doing, right, it's, 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 it's based off of a D7 chord. Okay, really cool, fun chord. Those of us who are curious, again, I like to throw in some theory in these lessons. You guys know all this. D, F sharp, A, and C. Those are the four notes we need to make that chord. Now you may be asking, well, wait a second, Angela, your capoed at the seventh fret is in a D7 here, yes. So this song is in the key of A. All right, but we're capoed at the seventh fret, so all these shapes, right, this, this first chord that we're playing is actually an A7. Okay, so we'll get to a little bit of that later. But yeah, it's pretty neat, it's pretty neat stuff. So we could play it up here, like another beetle does, but we'll talk about that later. Anyway, so we're gonna be on the seventh fret. This is George's part here. We'll talk about John's part later on in the hour. So we've got this riff based off of a D7 chord. Okay, so here's what's happening here. So when we're looking exactly at what's happening, all right, it's gonna be this D string, this open D string. It's gonna be a really big anchor to this part of the riff. All right, and if I go ahead and do the riff without quite strumming it, right? That's what's happening as far as the notes go. But again, we want this nice and jangly. Since most of us don't have a 12 string, we really want to give it that nice bright sound. So that's why we're going to be doing a little bit of this very loose alternate picking. But let's first talk about the notes that we're going to play. So go ahead, open D string here again, capo at the seventh fret, okay? So what I want you to do here, keep your second finger down on the second fret of the G string, okay? We're gonna use it later. But I found that this axe is a really, really beautiful anchor for this part of the song. So I'd like you to do that. Second finger, second fret of that A string, okay? Or, or G, G string, I apologize there. G string, second fret with the second finger, okay? So open D string, D's and dog. Now your third finger, notice how it's an octave, pretty cool, right? Put the third finger on the third fret of the B string, okay? Relative to this capo here. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do here. And I want you to alternate pick that. Plucking the top of that D string, plucking upwards on the B string, okay? Just like that. Notice that they are octaves. Just like that. Now we're gonna go back to that open D string. So it's gonna sound like this. After this, place that first finger, okay, on the first fret of the B string, B as in boy. And we're gonna put these two parts together. These two parts are gonna sound like this. Keep that alternate picking happening. Let's go ahead and do that again. Pretty neat stuff, right? So that's the first part. And again, we can't play anything fast. We can't play slow. Slow and steady wins the race here. So that's the first part of the riff. Now what we're gonna do here, hit that open E string. Okay, so it's gonna sound like this. First hit the open D string, then the open E string. Okay, so let's do those three parts again nice and slowly. Let's 
do this a few more times here, all right? Slow and steady wins the race. Go ahead and do this again. That alternate picking, okay? Really important in this section. Let's go ahead and do this a few more times here. I'm gonna give it a little more speed, just a touch. See how that second finger is acting as a really, really cool anchor here? We're gonna use this in a bit, okay? So let's go ahead and do that one more time. We're gonna go to the next part, part number four. Okay, so now we do here for part four, open D string. First finger on that first fret of the B string. Okay, so just like that. Just like that. Let's go ahead and do that again. Let's go ahead and do that one more time. Notice how I'm starting to slowly creep in the speed here. One more time for good luck. Why not? Here we go. All right. So those are those four parts there. Now what we're going to do is this part. All right, so what we're gonna do here, I want you to keep that second finger where it is, right? It's acting as our pivot, right? Our anchor here. First finger, keep it on the first fret of that B string, okay? So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go ahead and play this open D string yet again, okay? Open D string. Place that third finger on the third fret of that E string. Okay, so it's gonna sound like this. Now open D string, second fret. Bring that third finger back to the second fret of the E string. Okay, so let's go ahead and do those two parts nice and slowly here. Now we're gonna do from this point, open E string, but first we're gonna hit the open D string. Okay, so let's go ahead and do those three parts, right? This is where the melody is it's really based on that high E string, okay? So nice and slowly here, let's go ahead and do that again. Okay, pretty cool stuff, right? So let's go ahead and do that again. going to do here to go ahead and finish the phrase to finish this riff in the intro okay hit the open D string again and then pluck the note on the first fret of that B string okay so here's the whole second half here let's do this a few times nice and slowly here folks and we're gonna go go ahead and combine it okay parts one and parts two. So here we go, here's just the second half, this is part two. Let's go ahead and do that one more time, slow and steady folks. Keep that alternate picking happening. One more time for good luck, let's go ahead. So here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna combine parts one and parts two. I will take this slowly here. Again, it is just so wonderful to see all of you here today. All right, so this is again part one and part two. I'm gonna do this nice and slowly. So here we go.
pretty neat, right? Let's go ahead and bump up the speed just a little bit. Here we go. One more time. Now, here's the thing. I've had that second finger there the whole time. You're like, Angela, we didn't play it. We didn't use that note. Well, we're gonna use it right now. Now that we know the notes, right, those target notes in that riff. I want you to broaden that alternate picking, okay? So we're strumming, but very, very lightly, okay? Because we wanna... We want to get those really cool chord tones that are happening around this A7 chord, okay? So now, instead of just worrying solely about the notes, broaden the strumming, okay? See how it's nice and light and nice and open? We're getting those open strings. That's what I want you to do, okay? So how we have this second finger here on that second fret of the G string, okay? So that would be that E note, okay? We want that in there too now. So incorporate it nice and slowly here. So I will play this slowly, but again, broadening that alternate picking, including other strings that are around, okay? So particularly the G string and that B string, okay? So let's go ahead and do this yet again. that neat so again broadening just ever so slightly we want to we want to really try to emulate what's happening with a 12 string and again I'm on the neck position here on my strat so again those nice like chimey tones I've got reverb up a touch and I've got treble at 12 o'clock you even push it a little more if you wanted uh, it's, it's, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. So again, trying to emulate that 12 string the best we can on a six string guitar. All right. So let's go ahead and go over that. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to speed it up just a little bit and then we're going to go ahead and look at the verse. Okay. So here we go. So that's how we would do that. We have David here asking, if we have a 12 string, do we need to do the strum? I would, I think it would sound really cool. So I would say yes, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Um, I would absolutely do that. Thank you, David, for that. I would totally do it. Oh, thank you all for being here. Yes, this is, this is a tune from Rubber Soul. I know, it's so fun. I love George's songs. I think he wrote some really, really beautiful songs. So happy to show you, how to, you guys how to play this one today. So. That's the intro. We're gonna see this riff a lot in the song. It's gonna come back, back and forth. It's really, really great. Super fun to play. Again, what I think is gonna make it really, really helpful for you, for you guys is keeping that second finger as that anchor as you do this riff. All right, so just keep that in mind, all right? cool stuff it's cool stuff so anyway as far as like the theory goes and the notes that we're playing this is an a7 chord in actuality okay so what are those notes in an a7 chord it's going to be a it's going to be c sharp it's going to be e and it's going to be g all right so those are the notes that are in there again really really cool riff so after that intro riff we go right into the verse so the verse Sounds like this, I'll play it to normal speed and as always, we're gonna go ahead and break it down. So here is that, that verse. And then after that, we go into our intro that we just did. 
Okay, so that was it's sandwiched in between those intro parts is this verse. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, this is now based off of a D chord, or at least a D shape in actuality, right? What chord are we playing? We're playing an A major. But in the terms of this lesson, I'm gonna call this a D shape, even though in fact we are playing an A, C sharp, and E. Okay, so those are the, that is the one, three, and five of that A major chord, okay? So we've got a lot of suspensions happening. So I hope you guys like suspended chords. We're gonna see a lot of them today. So what's happening here, so the chords within this verse are going to be D, or the D shape, right? D sus two, and D sus four. We're playing the melody here as we are putting these chords together. So this is a D shape, a D sus two shape, and a D sus four shape. But in actuality, what are we playing? We are playing an A, we are playing an A sus two, and we're playing an A sus four, okay? So let's go ahead here and talk about this first chord. Well, it's a D shape, okay? So all of us know our D chord. For my beginners who are watching, Again, this one's, this is, this is a fun one for you guys to learn. I'll talk you through how to do this D chord really quickly here. First three fingers. Your first finger is going to be on the second fret relative to the capo, okay? Second fret of that G string, your second finger, second fret of the E string, and your third finger reaching over to the third fret of the B string. Now, in actuality, what are these notes? Because we're not up here, we're all the way up here. So where is that A, C sharp, and E? Well, let's go ahead and find them. So that first finger there, that's your E note. So that would be the ninth fret, okay? And your second finger right there, we're playing the C sharp. And your third finger, that's where we're playing A, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about this. We're gonna strum this D shape three times. So that if I needed, right there three times only, okay? So we've got one, two, three, down, up, down. We're gonna go ahead and lift the middle finger. This now makes it a suspended two chord, okay? And it's gonna sound like that. So how do we play this? Get your D chord, lift the second finger up. So it should sound like this. Love sus two chords, they're just coolest. All right, so that's what's happening there. And it's gonna be on an upstroke. All right, so just like that, you guys can do this, okay? Now after this, we're gonna go immediately back down to the D major, or sorry, sus four. So D to D sus four real quick. So how do we do the D sus4? Get your D chord, place your pinky on the third fret of that E string. Okay, so just like that. Now, let's go ahead and do that part nice and slowly here. on that D sus4, let's do that again. Okay, so this is the part that if I needed some. Okay, so just like that. Someone saying, this sounds awfully familiar to Here Comes the Sun. You would be absolutely correct. You would be absolutely correct. That song is, has a capo on the seventh fret too. So yes, good ear. Good ear, Joseph does sound like here comes the sun. All right, so let's go ahead, look through that again. We're now gonna go back to D major. To D sus two, back to D major. So this is the line that if I needed someone to love, that's what we're doing there. OK, 
Okay, again, sing that little melody in your head and notice that those chords are matching up with that melody. All right, let's go ahead and do that again. A little slowly here. Okay, so that's the if I needed someone to love. Now, for the second part of the phrase, it's gonna sound like this. So let's talk about those chords there, and then we'll put all these parts together. So we've got a D major, we're gonna strum that three times too. Down, up, down. Back to our D sus2, lifting up that second finger. Okay, bringing back the middle finger down, making this now that D major. Lift up that middle finger again, D sus2. Back to D major. D sus4, pinky down, third fret E string. To D major, lift the pinky finger. To C major. Okay, we're gonna do this nice and slowly again. I know I'm calling out a lot of chords. I know I'm calling out a lot of chords. We're gonna take this nice and slow. So here is the second part of that verse, nice and slowly here. That was part one, let's do now part two. Let's do part two again. Let's do that again, nice and slowly here. You guys are getting it. Just like that. All right, so let's go ahead here. What I'm gonna do, we're just gonna go over the verse. I'll kind of hum along, all right, to kind of give you guys an idea of how that, that verse part is going. So, if I needed someone to Now I'll do it again without the humming here. Here we go. To our C chord. All right, let's go ahead and do that again. Too bad, right? So there we go. So now we're gonna do here, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do the intro, and we're gonna do the verse. We're gonna do this a couple of times, and we'll look at the bridge. The bridge is super easy. It's three chords. It's a lot of fun. Four, technically five chords. It's fun. Don't worry, this is great. Um, again, hope you guys are having fun. As I always like to mention on these lessons, if you guys are having a great time, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. It helps the cause, it's a lot of fun. Writing in the comments helps the algorithm. It's good stuff. Share this with a friend. It's good, it's always good to bring music, right? It's good to bring music into the world. It's great stuff and again, I always wanna thank the folks at Fishman for helping me do these week after week. If you guys wanna learn more about the Fishman Fluence Strat style pickups that I have in this guitar, which are totally rad, I absolutely love them. I'm gonna leave a link in the video description so you guys can see. Um, all the details on these. Um, I truly love these pickups. They're awesome. They're so cool. They're so cool. They, they're, they're Austin, Texas approved. I, I do gigs. When I go to Austin, Texas and play, I bring this guitar and the pickups always get a lot of love. So they do the job. Totally love these pickups. So be sure and go ahead and check that out in the video, in the video description below. Um, let's go ahead here again. Intro, verse, I'm gonna take the first pass a little slower than the second pass. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the speed just a little bit. And again, 
Thank you all. Hope you guys are all hanging in there. How's everything going? Let me know. All right. So here we go. do that again. That's what's happening there. Let's go ahead and look at the bridge. So the bridge part looks and sounds like this. Then we go into a verse again. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So the chords here, relative to the capo, relative to the capo would be an A minor, a B7, an E minor, an A major, and an A sus4. Now, these are relative to the capo. In actuality, are these like the, the chords that we're playing? No, this would be an E minor. This is truly an F sharp seven. The E minor is truly a B minor. And the A is truly an E. And that A sus four is truly an E sus four. Okay, so again, those are all our, our target notes, right? <laughs> it's good stuff, it's good stuff. And don't worry, we're gonna do something with this capo after we get through George's parts and we're gonna explore how John had played this, okay? So we've got A minor here, we're just gonna strum it. So let's talk about those notes for a moment, where to place your fingers, all right? So your first finger is gonna go on the first fret of that B string, second finger, second fret of the D string, and your third finger is gonna be on the second fret of the G string. Now, is this going to feel crammed? Yes. Sorry, that's just how it happens when you capo the seventh fret. But it, it's doable, guys, you can do it. Okay, so we've got A minor, but in actuality is an E minor. The actual notes we are playing are E, G, and B. All right, now we're gonna go to a B7. This one feels particularly cramped, but again, you can do this, okay? So you're gonna use these four fingers. Okay, so your first finger, I want you placing that on the first fret of the D string relative to that capo, okay? Your second finger, second fret of the A string, your third finger, second fret of the G string, and pinky finger, yes, we're gonna put on the second fret of the E string. You're gonna strum the A string downwards. Does it feel crammed? Yes. But you can do it. Okay, so that's how we're gonna play that B7. So let's go ahead and go through the A minor to the B7 switch. Keeping that arm moving again. Now we're gonna get a little bit of relief here with this E minor chord which in actuality is a B minor, okay? Second finger, second fret of the A string, your third finger, second fret of the D string, okay? Good stuff, all right? So let's go ahead and go through those. Now, when it comes to this song here, at least this part of the, the bridge, we're gonna do A minor, 
You gotta measure that A minor. We're gonna do two measures of the B7. And then the E minor. Now in the second pass of the verse, we're gonna do one of each. So it's gonna sound like this. And then the E minor, A minor. See how we cut a measure from that B7? Let's go ahead and do that again. Super cool, I love how it goes minor. I love how it goes minor in that bridge. So what happens next is we're gonna do this A to A sus, back to A major. Now, there are a bunch of different ways. I did see that someone mentioned, can you, David is asking, can you explain the A sus for? Absolutely, so. What we're doing here, so the A sus4, which in actuality, right, is gonna be an E to an E sus4, okay? But in terms of the capo, I'll call it an A sus4 here. When we have A major, so it's A, C sharp, and E, those are the three target notes, the one, three, five. But what happens is when we do a sus4, we replace the three, which in this case is C sharp, and then we turn it into a D note. So this is for an A sus4 chord, okay? So that's what's happening there. Now, again, we're actually playing an E sus4 chord, but because we're in the capo, I'll call it an A sus. So David, I hope that answers your question, all right? So this is how I like to play my A major. I know some of us, have many different ways of playing this chord. Many of my students play this differently, but this is the way that I really like to play it. This may feel crammed to some of you. So I know for some of you, it even feels crammed. We play it up here. So what we want to do here, we're using our second, third, and fourth finger to do this. Second finger, second fret of that D string, your third finger, second fret of the G string, pinky finger, fourth finger, second fret of that B string. You're gonna strum from the A string downward, open E string to finish the chord there. Okay, so to make it a sus four, you can just move that pinky over to the third fret of that B string. Just like that. Now there are many different ways. I know some people do this. I find that's a little crammed and uncomfortable for my hand, particularly when I'm playing with a capo. This, uh, this feels a little bit more comfortable for me, so. But I know everybody's, you could even probably do this. But I like the curled fingers there, so. That's just me. Again, I wanna give you guys options. So again, up to you guys. There are many different ways. Whatever works for your hands. I, again, I know we're in a cramped uh, position here, but it's, it's totally worth it. It sounds really good. All right, so let's go ahead and go through that bridge one more time. Then to give it context, we'll, we'll attach it to a verse. And then we're gonna go ahead and look at like this interlude section. And then we're gonna go ahead and talk about what John is doing on the second guitar on this song, okay? And here we go. We're gonna go ahead and add a verse into that bridge. Okay, we're gonna do this a couple times, so here we go. Okay, now after this, we have an intro riff. Let's do it. Bridge. Okay, pretty 
cool stuff. Let's go ahead and do that again. For verse, intro riff, bridge. Here we go. Then we go into a verse. Now let's go ahead and talk about the interlude here. The interlude sounds like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure this one out. So again, what we're doing here, a lot of suspensions happening, we're also doing this chord, which is one that I've talked about before in these lessons. And it's a fun one to play. Sometimes it's a little hard to reach when we're all the way up here, but because we're on a capo and the frets are a little closer together, this chord is actually a little bit easier to grab in this position. So I would call this a, a, a D5. It's technically an A5 because of the notes that we are playing here. All right. So what we're gonna do is this, first finger, second finger, fourth finger, okay? Your first finger, to play this D5 chord, and of course it's the capo here, first finger, second fret of that G string, second finger, third fret of the B string, pinky finger, you're gonna put that all the way up here, it would be the fifth fret, but we're technically, it's, it's on the 12, okay? So, strum the D string downwards. Really cool chord. Okay. Give me three strums on that. Now we're gonna go to a D sus four. I'm playing it this way, cause again, it helps me get to that next D major a little bit easier. Okay, so. Like that. So. Place the third finger. Don't move your first or second finger, okay? Place your third finger on the third fret of the E string, like that. And then we go to D major. Okay, so let's do that again. Let's do it a little slower here. I know I'm playing that a little fast. It's quick, okay? Now, from there, D sus2, lifting that second finger, back to D major, D sus4, to D. Okay, let's do that whole bit. Okay, let's do it again. time. Now from here we're going to go to a C major. Pinky finger, fourth finger, bring it to the third fret of that E string, play the stat C and this note here, which is D, but in actuality, we've got a G note there. Sounds like that, included on the chord. Open B string, open G string. Then we go to our intro riff. So it'll sound like this. Intro riff. Okay, let's go ahead and do the interlude here. All right, and then into the intro riff. Here we go. Okay. 
intro riff. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Those are George's parts, okay? And then when we think about that outro, it's the intro riff. And then it ends on a big D chord. But what I'm also hearing too, when I went back, I kind of hear one of these as well. So, up to you. If it were me and I was playing this live, I'd probably end with this one. Okay, so that would be that, that D5, pinky finger, 12th fret, and then your first finger and your second finger. First finger, ninth fret, second finger, 10th fret. Okay, so that's me, that's what I would do. So let's run through all of George's part right now and we're gonna have a couple minutes left to go over what John is doing on his guitar. Because remember, the Beatles had two guitar players. So we're going to go through both parts. So here is all of George's parts uh, for If I Needed Someone. So here we go. Intro. I'll abridge some of this, but it'll be all four parts. So here we go. Verse. Intro riff, bridge, interlude. Intro. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Listen back to the song to get the order of everything, but that's what George is doing there. Really, really fun. So, this may come as some needed relief for those of you with this capo and you're like, God, I hate this capo. I can't play it. No problem. Do John's part and just don't use one. So, for John's part, we're not gonna use capo at all. We are playing these chords. So what I'm gonna do here, and to the best of my ear and to the best of my eyes, I was watching some videos of when they played this live. I believe it was live in Tokyo. And it's, it's kind of, you know, not the best quality video. I mean, you can kind of see what they're doing-ish, um, but definitely John was up here. So which makes me believe that he was not using the capo. Um, on this song. Also, too, when I was watching the concert for George when Eric Clapton was playing, he was playing up here, too. So, so song is in the key of A, and John does it to the, to my best guess, is something like this. So this would be the intro. Then we have the verse. Then we have the bridge. To the best of my knowledge, that's what I think is happening. So what we're gonna do here, before we get on to John's part, I'm gonna tune up real quick. Uh, because we were in the capo so long, always a good idea to go ahead and tune up again. Thank you all for tuning in to the Riff Rundown. This is always so much fun. I enjoy these as well. Again, if you're having fun, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends. Watch other videos. We're, we're turning the corner on a year of doing these. It's kind of crazy. Um, I didn't even know I knew these many songs. Apparently I do. Um, so it has been such a blast. I, I look forward to everything that 2022 is going to bring. And I hope you guys are having fun. I really hope you guys are having fun. So this is the tuning song. You guys get this one for free. 
There we go. Okay. Always good to tune up after you play with the capo. Um, and also, too, and I dropped the tuner. I'll get that later. Um, also, too, when you do have the capo, always tune to it if you're using it. So since we are on the seventh fret, so that B, E, so on and so forth, tune to that if you're, you know, you're ever playing with a capo. I think it's a good idea. Um, all right. So here we go again. There we go. That's a little better. So with this, okay, he's playing open chords and some bar chords here. So for the intro, just an A chord. And he's just strumming that. Could you do an A7 and kind of sneak it in there every once in a while? I think you could. You could. If it were me, I would probably just stick to the A chord, but that's just me. So, for the verse, I'm gonna give you two different levels of this. When it comes to the verse, you could strum an A chord, right, our A, C sharp, E, to G, G, B, D, that's the one, three, five there, right? We have G, B, first finger is on the B note, open D string, open G string, third finger on the third fret of that B string is going to be D, and then your fourth finger is going to be playing G on the third fret of that E string. So, those are the three notes we need, there they are. And it's cool. Just what we were doing there. All inversions, folks. So much fun. So, so let's go ahead and do this. So for the verse here, let's count this as level one. You can str strum your A chord and then landing on that G chord. So that if I needed someone to love and just hold that A chord. I've been thinking of G chord. And you can just do that, right? And just go from A to G. Easy, no capo, cool, easy. Now, if you wanted a level two, which might be kind of cool to do this, all the suspendeds, right? The sus two and the sus four that we were doing up here. Right, all of that. We could do them up here too. Sounds a little different, so check it out. So we'll A, B this really quickly here. So here's what we were doing with George. And notice how these two guitars will sound really good together. So here's the George part. Now, here's John's part, right? If we wanted to add the suspensions too and match what George was doing. I mean I encourage you guys if you have a friend who plays guitar use this song play the song together one of you does John's part and one of you just does George's part I encourage you guys and as always please like tag me and Fishman in these videos we want to see this stuff so um, so yeah if you have someone else who plays guitar you know what I mean switch off the parts be really cool so Let's go ahead and look at that suspension if you want to do that level two and not just go ahead and, you know, just play the A chord, which is totally cool. Not knocking it. It's great. Okay. So same exact strumming patterns that we were doing um, in George's part two. So we've got A, A, C sharp and E. Now in A sus two, all you're going to do here, you have your A chord, lift that fourth finger. We're now playing that open B string. That's our sus two. Okay, so that's how we play a sus two. Your first finger should be out. Second finger is on the second fret of that D string. That's E, and then third finger is playing the second fret of the G string, which is A. Okay, so we're having the A, B, and E, which we need, right, to make that sus two chord. Yay. Okay. Then we go back to A major. So, now A sus four, pinky finger, fourth finger, third fret 
of that B string, which is D. That's what makes the sus4, right? We're replacing the C sharp there. Like that. So it's gonna sound like this. Back to A major, A sus2, back to A major. Okay, so let's do that again. Cool, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do that again. Now, here's part two of that verse. So part two is A, A sus two, back to A, back to A sus two, A, A sus four, A, to G. Yeah, really loving these pickups today. Sounded really cool on this song, okay. So again, let's do that nice and slowly here. Okay, so you can choose to do that way. If that's still too much, just do an A chord and a G chord and it'll sound awesome, okay? So let's go ahead and look at the bridge here. So the bridge is gonna sound like this if we're playing John's parts. So that's what's happening there. Let's go ahead and look at that. E minor, we know it. Okay. We're gonna go to an F sharp major here. I'm not sure he's playing a seventh chord. Could you throw it in there? Sure, you're just adding one more note on top of that F sharp major. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about those notes in the F sharp major. So what are those notes? We want F sharp, we want A sharp, we want C sharp. Yes, is A sharp real here? Yes. Can't call it B flat, because B is already taken in this scale. So we can't do it, or in the key at least. Okay, so first finger, put that across all six strings, okay? Thumb placement, I have a strat. So see that, the skunk stripe on the back of the neck. That's where I want your thumb, okay? And I would say, have it between your first finger and your third finger, where the, so it should be, the thumb and the second finger should be staring at each other, right? Stare down. <laughs> it's Saturday, guys, I'm happy to be here. All right, so what we've got here, right? First finger across all six strings. Second finger, third fret of that G string, all right? There is your A sharp, can't call it B flat, okay? Third finger, go ahead and place that on C sharp, fourth fret of the A string, and your fourth finger goes on the F sharp, fourth fret of the D string. So there are all those notes. Then from there, we're gonna to go to a B minor. What's really cool about this, your bar is already here on the second fret. B, the root of this B minor chord, which we are playing next, is going to be rooted on the A string on the second fret. So literally, bring everything down, okay? Now Sam's saying, I think it's an F sharp seven that he's doing. You could play it, you could. I'm not sure I really heard that seven, at least in John's part, but I could totally be wrong. Um, but you could totally throw in the seven. It's still gonna work melodically with, with, with the song and all of that, so totally cool. Um, okay, so we have that B minor here. Okay, first finger rooted on the second fret of that A string, there's your B, okay. Third finger reaching over to the F sharp, fourth fret of the D string. Your fourth finger will go down on the fourth fret of that G string, that is B. And then your second finger is going to play D. That is the flat third, okay? So the B, D, and F sharp are the notes we need to make that B minor. Now we're gonna go ahead and play E major here. We all know this one. 
but I'll tell you our target notes are 135 is going to be E, G sharp, and B. The second we make this an E sus4, that fourth finger should be on the second fret of the G string. We're replacing the G sharp with an A, hence the sus4. All right, so we could do that. So let's see, fun stuff, right? So let's go ahead and look over that. We're gonna look over John's parts. Then I'll, I'll go ahead and do both because it's, it's fun. I'll go over George's part again too so you can see how the two will work together. So, all right, so here is the verse and we're gonna go over the bridge, okay? So here we go, verse. The level two. And then the intro, just play an A chord. Bridge. So, there you go, those are those parts. Again, we're getting some, the F sharp seven. If you guys want to play it, play it. It's totally cool. I'm just saying, for the rhythm part, I'm not sure I heard that flat seven in there, but if you want to play the F sharp seven, do it. All right, so now what we're going to do here, when it comes to the interlude where we were doing this part and the George part, just play an A chord here. So if you're John, if you're playing the John roll, just play an A, okay? And then the interlude, keep playing that A. All right, so that's what's happening there. The John part is a little bit easier than the, uh, than the George part, but that's okay, all right? It's all good stuff, and I encourage you guys to learn both because this is really cool. So let's see here, I will run through the John part real quick, and then I will transpose and do George's, all right? So here we go again. This is the tune, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. My name is Angela Petrilli here with the awesome folks at Fishman doing the Riff Rundown. If you guys are enjoying these lessons, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Angela Petrilli Music. You can catch me on Instagram, Angela Petrilli Music. Um, I did a bunch of videos for Norman's Rare Guitars. I still continue to do them. They're great, so you can check out those. I did a guitar of the day this week. That was just so much fun. Um, so you can check me out on, at Norm's, too. And yeah, in a town near you. Hopefully I'll get to be touring soon. Did a show uh, last Friday in LA and it was so, so fun to get to play live again with my band, it was awesome. All right, so here we go again. Thank you all so much. Let's go ahead and do John's part first and we're gonna go ahead and do George's, here we go. That was John, and here is George real quick. Again, a bridge, here we go.
There you go, guys. There you have it. That is If I Needed Someone, George's Parts, John's Parts. So much fun on my, uh, my Fishman Fluent Strat. So yeah, again, so, so much fun. I really enjoy doing these and I hope you guys are learning a lot. Thanks to the folks at Fishman for helping me run these week after week. Again, if you guys are enjoying the lessons, be sure to subscribe to the channel, comment on the videos. It helps the algorithm so that more and more folks can join us during these lessons. Ooh, and that just went really bright. Um, again, thank you all so, so much. Wishing you much success on your musical journey. As always, take good care and I 